shut my helmet, and that was it. We were serious. That's an awesome feeling, I think, when you overcome a battle and you win. That's why you're in that gym, you're riding a bicycle, you're running up and down the hills, so you can do that last lap. Right. So you can beat that guy on the last lap. That's why you, you, you know, I know when I was in the gym and I would, I'd do three more when I couldn't is because, you know, I would just sit there and think about Freddie Spencer or Wayne Gardner or Wayne Rainey. And I would do three more and I, and I couldn't. Mm. And it's because I was thinking about those guys. And that's, there's a lot of guys that won't do that. You know, they just, they just go, well, you know, I'll go run today and that'll be good. And, you know, my, my dad told me when I was little, you know, racing and he goes, you know, you have to want it more than the other guys. Well, that was just words, you know, it just bounces off. You know, you're like, yeah, whatever, dad. And then later when you realize, like I'd say in 86 for me, when I was running and thinking about those guys, that's when you realize, hey, I do want it more than those other guys. He was right. You got to want it more than those other guys, but you have to want that. So yeah, I mean it's uh, that's that's the same way I've always I've always thought, and you know at the end of the races when things like that happen or or it's a, a three bike you know battle, it was just something weird, and I've told Tom, my crew chief, that it's just something I experience on a bike, and I don't know what it is. But there's been so many races where, you know, the whole race I'm holding on by a string. You know, I'm on the I'm on the back of the group just struggling, struggling, and then I see L6 to go, and all of a sudden. I'm there and I'm, I just go, okay, well, how am I, uh, I'm going to win this. How am I going to do it? And it, you don't think about struggling. You think about, okay, I got to pass this guy and this guy and do it. And it's funny. And, and again, when, when training, thinking about who I want to beat, who I'm training to beat and, and I'll be a good example is I'll be riding by myself for two or three hours on a bicycle. It's got a heart rate monitor, have a power meter. And I've got all the different stuff going at the same time, looking at stuff and doing the same power. And I start thinking of a race and right. I start thinking of what I want to do in that season. And I'll look down and I'm doing the same power, but my heart rate's gone up 15 beats because yeah, I'm getting like certain. an adrenaline rush right. of thinking of something different. And I absolutely know it's what you're pretty talking funny. about. Yeah. They believe in me. I mean, they 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 believe in me a little bit more than you know. I think sometimes I do. So it's uh, I couldn't be happier that's, with. That's that's everything. With when they're behind you, 110 percent like that, that is everything. Yeah, that's that's what I. I mean, I've had some people behind me that that have. They said, well, how how much does this person help you with, or what did they tell you this and that? And I think it's so important for for a younger rider that is being talked to by, you know, whether it be you, whether it be like Wayne, that it's not so much what you're telling them and teaching them, it's it's them having somebody like that behind them mm -hmm. and what they're saying, basically listening to and believing in them. And that's huge. I mean, if, if I come in and we talk and even if you don't, shed any light you know to me but you being there to talk to listening to and have somebody of that caliper um believing in somebody i think that gives that person that much more confidence to to get it done and and yeah it's huge right yeah i mean for me <clears throat> when i rode with kenny or rode for kenny uh he would just go out on the track and there's not a lot of things i couldn't tell you you know how to go faster is that's not possible but I can go out on the track and I can watch the other guys go around and I can tell you, hey, one guy's, this guy's square in the corner a little more and he seems to be, you know, rolling through and doing this, that and the other, whatever. And that's just good information. You're just talking about things and, and uh, if you suggest something and, I, you know, I'm like, hey, I think that's a good idea. Just things like that. Kenny would do that, you know, it's like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this and that. Yeah, I think that's the right way to go. Just having somebody there to back you up going, yeah, I, th I think that's, that's right. You know, that's worth a lot.
I remember my first time going to a 500 from a super bike and I just went into Kenny's motorhome and I just went, I was practically in tears. I was just going, I, I can't ride this. You know, he's, no, just relax. You're going to learn it. It's going to take some time. <laughs> you know, I, I actually, I would love to ride a 500. I don't know. I, it'd scare the hell out of me. I know it would, but because when I started watching racing, I, I really started watching in 88, 88 to 94, I watched GPs religiously and, and just not really before that because I wasn't old enough to really understand what they were saying because I was only about four or five mm -hmm. when I started watching it. So, um, but I mean, I, so I watched all that stuff and I saw all that stuff and I know how violent they were. I mean, it was ridiculous, but yeah, I, I would like to ride a 500. I don't know about putting it on the limit, but, but uh, able to feel the, the power and, and no, no electronic assistant would be, uh, would be pretty cool. Well, you wouldn't want to ride a 500 because <laughs> what you're riding today, it's so removed and it would be miserable to ride because the tires are crap and the suspension's crap and then, you know, the power would come in so hard that it would just, you know, it'd want to high side you. And, and from what you know, it wouldn't be fun. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, it just, you just do a lap on it and just go, that's crap. And then, you know, mm. that'd be the end of it. One funny story, we were in um, uh, England for the match races, and this was in 84. And um, Yamaha had brought a new V4 engine, well, it was reed valve. And that was the very first reed valve engine they had ever built um, for the 500. Ours were disc valve. And so they had it in the truck, and we were looking at it, and I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I said, Kel, put that in there for the for the race. And he's like, oh no, the Japanese would just freak out, you know. And I'm like, put it in for the race. I want to try it. No, we have to save it for the GP to, you know, for a test. And and um, I just kept on him, you know, Kel, just put it in there. I won't say anything. Don't say anything. Just put it in there. And he's like, oh man. So he puts the motor in, we go out and we win the race. And uh, the Japanese found out, and they were out of their minds. But uh, we knew it worked. So they, there was phone calls to Japan and all kinds. I was in trouble, and Kel was in trouble. And I'm just like, well, then fire us. <laughs> if you're that pissed off, go ahead, just fire us. And they're like, no, I don't think we can do that. <laughs> so... Yeah, we, we've done some things that uh, we weren't supposed to, but uh, yeah, that was one, one thing that uh, really wound them up.